Jeff Heilman, a consulting health actuary and a fellow of the Society of Actuaries based in Raleigh, North Carolina. I'd like to welcome you to an installment of the SOA Health Section's Actuarial Toolkit, a series that covers concepts and terms fundamental to actuarial practice in health insurance. Make sure to bookmark our channel and playlist for more videos in the series, where we will go deeper into these core concepts for health actuaries. Today, we're going to discuss the basic building blocks of an actuarial cost model, specifically a model that can be used to forecast the costs associated with physician office visits. Usually what you'll be aiming for in a cost model is a PMPM, or per member per month value. For example, a PMPM of $100 would mean that an average member in a health plan or group will incur $100 of costs each month. PMPMs can represent costs across the spectrum of all healthcare services, or they can represent costs for a single type of service, such as our example of office visits. We're going to look separately at the distinctions between calculating a PMPM from historical data and projecting a PMPM for a future period. To calculate a PMPM is fundamentally as simple as starting with the total cost and then dividing by members and months. That denominator is commonly combined into a single concept called a member month, which really is just as simple as it sounds. Each member accumulates one member month for each month they're enrolled in the plan. So in any given year, every enrolled member will contribute between one and 12 member months. The average number of enrollees over any period can be calculated simply by dividing the number of member months by the number of months in that period. For reporting on a PMPM, the numerator of the calculation will be some variety of cost metric. This is a good opportunity to take a side trip into the different types of costs that you might run across. For any office visit, you're likely to encounter billed charges, allowed amounts, and paid amounts. A billed charge is usually the highest amount and mostly exists only on paper. It's rare that this billed amount is ever paid by anyone. The amount that a provider has agreed with the health insurance carrier is called the allowed amount. The difference between the billed charge and the allowed amount is called the discount. That allowed amount is used to calculate the member's cost sharing liability. That's any deductible, copayment, or coinsurance that the member might be responsible for. The amount that remains when cost sharing is subtracted from the allowed amount is called the paid amount. PMPMs are frequently tracked on an allowed and a paid basis but build charges are rarely analyzed in this manner. The most important thing to ensure is that you've selected the correct dollar amount for the application you are modeling. Now we'll shift our focus to projecting PMPMs, which allows for some additional creative license. We're going to rearrange the calculation a bit and project two pieces independently, a utilization rate and a unit cost. In our example, we've assumed that the utilization rate is equal to 2.5 office visits per year, and that an average office visit costs $220. If we multiply these and then divide by 12 months, we get a PMPM of $46. These input values would typically be measured from historical data, although adjustments may be considered for trends in the utilization rate, expected shifts in the risk level of the population, changes in benefit design, or changes in coverage. I mentioned earlier that a projected PMPM is the product of the utilization rate and the unit cost for a given service. Because we're dealing with office-based care in this cost model, we can think of the unit cost as the average cost per visit. Typically, you'll wanna think about projecting the average allowed unit cost. That's the total amount that the provider is being reimbursed for the service. And then adjusting for enrollee cost sharing to get to the paid unit cost. In general, you will probably start with a recent average allowed amount and trend it forward to the projection period. Selecting a specific method for trending historical cost data could be a whole video series on its own, so we'll just assume that you've got a good trend factor. Some considerations in projecting a unit cost other than historical trends may be any known changes to the provider network or changes in healthcare practice that may impact the mix of services. The last step in projecting the unit cost for a PMPM is to subtract any enrollee cost sharing to move that allowed unit cost to be a paid unit cost. Sometimes this can be just as simple as subtracting a copay for each unit of service, although there are usually twists such as deductibles, out-of-pocket maximums, and other cost sharing elements. These will typically be calculated in a separate step to determine the expected average amount of cost sharing for each service. Well, we've done it. 
the beginning to end of building a simple actuarial cost model on a PMPM basis. Before we finish, let's just consider why the PMPM cost model is such a powerful and widely used tool. First, there's strength in its relative simplicity. Non-actuarial stakeholders can understand its component parts. This is how many office visits people use. This is the average cost of an office visit, et cetera. A second strength is that while your model will never be right, it's very easy to look back and attribute the difference between actual results and the projected results. In essence, a backward-looking PMPM cost model can be used to understand error in the forward-looking model covering the same time period. Finally, looking at experience on a per member per month basis ties everything back to the premium, which is really the basic building block of health insurance finance. Thanks for following along today and stay tuned for more in the Health Actuarial Toolkit series. Hi, I'm Doug Norris and I'm the chair of the Society of Actuaries Health Section. We hope that you've enjoyed this edition of the Health Actuarial Toolkit because we intend to produce many more of these training videos. If you're interested in participating, in the content development process, please reach out to me, to Jeff Heilman, or to any member of the Health Section Council. Thank you and have a great day.